Ever since I started the channel, one of the most common questions I get is what's inside your knapsack? During the Victorian era, there were two items of kit that were omnipresent. The haversack, used for carrying rations, and the knapsack, later replaced by a soft-sided valise. The latter was used to carry a soldier's necessities, such as spare boots, shirts, brushes, cleaning supplies, and his greatcoat or blanket. Throughout the era, there were many different patterns, although most conformed to a general shape and size. Perhaps as a small indulgence, I decided to make reproductions of these items to carry my shooting supplies. Although there was no real reason to do this, it just felt right based on the type of shooting I do. I patterned my haversack and my knapsack on diagrams found in Pierre Turner's excellent book, Soldiers' Accoutrements of the British Army. The resulting system allows me to carry all I need when shooting, while at the same time fitting into the type of historical shooting I enjoy. The haversack is a bit of a hybrid. It conforms neither to the earlier 1850s pattern, which was in fact quite large, nor to the smaller 1880s and 90s pattern. That said, it's somewhere in the middle and is constructed on long similar means. Now obviously I don't carry lunch in my haversack, but what I do carry are necessities that I take with me every time I go shooting. They include a tool roll, which contains small tools that are required for repair and maintenance. A small pouch containing cleaning materials such as flannelette for cleaning barrels, a range finder, a small pouch containing the legs of my shooting rest and the key to install them, a pair of binoculars, a 30 caliber bore snake for cleaning my 303 rifles, the Lee Metford and the SMLE, earplugs, these happen to be the surefire variety. They include an internal diaphragm to enable you to continue to hear ambient noise while still providing adequate protection. The blow tube from my Martini Henry, and a nylon toothbrush, a pencil, and a dental pick, the former and latter for cleaning. The binoculars are just an old pair of eight power field glasses, good enough for shooting out to about 300 yards. The tool roll contains all the things required for cleaning and maintenance in the field. The first part of which, in a pouch attached to the end, are three turn screws. Now these are proper parallel sided turn screws. That is to say, the bit will not mar or otherwise damage any screws on any particular rifle. A simple lighter for blackening sights. A piece of 303 case used as an emergency flint mapper, a series of cleaning jags, a mainspring vise, a small flashlight used as a bore light, a spout for a powder can, a nipple wrench, a powder measure used for working up muzzle loading rifles, another small turn screw that I've filed to a very fine point, and a small pair of pliers, a brass drift and a thinner drift for pushing the barrel pins out of the brown bess, a worm for removing stuck patches in barrels, a 223 caliber bore brush used for cleaning the patent breech on the volunteer rifle, and a ball puller, because we're all not perfect. It all fits together in a nice little package that rolls up and is a handy size fitting inside the haversack with no problem. The cleaning supply pouch contains pieces of flannelette for cleaning. I keep the patches in little bags which keeps them separated. In one I carry wet patches that are soaked in water and a slight bit of soap for scrubbing the bore and dry patches for, well, drying the barrel. There's a small piece of Brillo pad contained within for the attacking of any rust that might form typically on ramrods and this kind of thing, as well as a roll of Teflon tape wrapped around the threads of the nipple after cleaning during its replacement onto the bolster. The bore snake is completely conventional and available commercially. It contains a bronze brush woven into the end of the pull-through material, and that pull-through material cleans the fouling out after being loosened by the brush. I also carry a rangefinder, 
Because of the type of shooting I do, I often don't have any reference points to see how far it is I'm actually shooting. This device enables me to accurately determine the range and lessen the time spent in working up a rifle. It's good out to about 800 yards, and its only disadvantage is you have to remove the battery because it tends to turn itself on when inside the pouch. The blow tube is a combination of a Martini Henry case and a 303 case soldered to the back. This is for softening of fouling during accurate shooting practices with the Martini Henry. And these three pieces are pretty self-explanatory for cleaning and record keeping. They fit inside the haversack in a small sleeve fitted for that purpose. I also carry an oil bottle for obvious reasons. This pouch contains the legs for my shooting rest, but more on that later. The knapsack is made with historical materials and dimensions. Taken straight from Pierre Turner's book, I have no reason to doubt their authenticity. The body's made of oil skin and the straps made of vegetable tan leather versus the buff. They both, however, whiten with ease. Fitted to the outside of the knapsack is my shooting rest. This is held in place by a black leather carriage held in an historical way, a period example of which is shown in this photograph. Removal is simple and takes very little time whatsoever. As mentioned before, its legs are carried in a separate pouch that I usually have inside the haversack. The rest itself is contained within an oil skin cover. In designing the shooting rest, I settled on dimensions that matched closely those of the army mess tin of the era, its kidney shape being most distinctive. Assembly of it takes approximately one minute to complete. Its four legs are contained in a separate pouch and are secured to the rest proper with four bolts contained in the bottom of the rest. Though probably not required, the legs are coated to their specific spot with a series of dots placed on the inside edge. The bolts are secured using the provided key carried in the separate leg pouch. Once assembled, the footprint of the rest is quite wide and provides for a very stable shooting platform. The rest is adjustable for height as well, depending on the position that you find yourself in relation to your target and the ground you're lying on. It has a full range of two inches up and down. Two brass pins soldered to a plate provide the necessary requirement to hold the rest at its appropriate height. Adjustment is achieved by simply sliding the pins out, moving the rest to its appropriate height, and then sliding the pins back inside. The rest unadjusted stands 7 inches high, and that suits most purposes just fine. However, if more height is required, a full adjustment of another 2 inches gives 9, and that provides for good downhill shooting. Many people have asked about the dimensions of this rest, and I'm providing here a series of sketches detailing the plan, elevation, and section for those that are interested. Here also are a number of photographs showing details of the construction. The interior core which is made of plywood. The base of the rest with its center post and holes drilled at regular intervals. The corner of the base where the legs and the bolt interface. And the pins that hold the top in place. I use the knapsack to contain what might be called the second line supplies for shooting. With a couple of exceptions, everything inside the knapsack isn't absolutely required for everyday shooting. However, for working up of a rifle or other more involved evolutions, the things that I carry inside this are used regularly. On top of the knapsack is carried the shooting mat. I made this to resemble somewhat in dimension and color a rolled greatcoat. It unfolds to a dimension that is more than acceptable for normal prone shooting. One thing you'll notice as you watch me undo the knapsack here is how many bloody straps there are. Every single one of them has to be undone to get into it. That's the way it was then and that's the way it is now. Delving into the knapsack you'll first see a small rectangular pad. This serves two purposes. One to pad the inside of the knapsack against the back and two to provide some padding on any hard surface that I might be resting my elbows on during shooting. A clipboard for recording data during rifle workups. 
small canvas bag containing paper patches for patching targets and other documentation. There's a small pouch that I use when shooting the Enfield. Attached to the belt next to the expense pouch, it collects the powder cylinders for further use. Some masking tape for miscellaneous target repairs and such, as well as a pair of fingerless woolen gloves. These are critical, especially when using the Enfield and its finicky caps. A set of earmuffs provides some flexibility as far as ear protection goes. Orange spray paint for resurfacing my steel targets. And a stapler for paper targets. For data gathering of various loads in various rifles, I carry a chronograph and its instruction booklet. There's a tape measure for measuring target distances and dimensions, a pair of scissors for cutting patches, glue for patching of targets, as well as a small bottle of WD-40. For cleaning during firing and other routine maintenance, I have a four-section cleaning rod. Combined with the cleaning jags in the haversack, this is good for everything not including the 303 Lee Metford. Rattling around in the bottom are the four supports for the chronograph sunshades, and to round it all off, there's a spotting scope and tripod. Following the example laid out by this fellow, what use is a whole bunch of equipment if you haven't laid it out for inspection? At the risk of being somewhat gratuitous, here it is in all its glory. It's important to note, however, that everything that you see here is used at one point or another during a year's worth of shooting. Obviously, there are some things that get used more than others, namely the shooting mat and shooting rest. But the gloves in wintertime are definitely required as is the spotting scope for longer ranges. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that the knapsack was eventually replaced with a valise. If you'll indulge me, I'll give you a sneak peek at my latest project. It's an 82 pattern valise for my set of 82 pattern valise equipment. As you can see here, it'll contain everything required and fits the contents of the knapsack almost perfectly. If this is something that interests you, don't worry. The set will have a complete video of its own in the near future.